All right. So good. So um. All right. Yeah. So this is this is one I want to talk about in terms of what the landscape will be like for UFC fighters and doping moving forward. Now, in January of this year, um, it was announced by USADA CS, uh, CEO Travis Tiger that USADA's partnership with the UFC was coming to an end. Now, this was rumored to be a result of you know the UFC being willing to bend the rules regarding McGregor's return to the sport you know the mandatory six month pool testing required for fighters to be eligible eligible to compete um and you sort of suggested that the ufc was giving preferential treatment offering an exemption to mcgregor in that situation um and in turn the ufc felt that you saw the word over testing mcgregor and responded unfairly to the claim that they didn't care if mcgregor had to pass 37 tests to compete again <laughs> um i think the ter- determination of this relationship went heavily under the ra- radar um usada's hard- hardly a faultless organization they're not exactly squeaky clean you know testing has been very inconsistent sometimes they target some fighters way more than others you know we've heard that some fighters are tested 20 30 times in the space of a time and other fighters get two or three which so there's no consistency there so i get that but there was an effect there was like an element of legitimacy about them you know fighters have been banned some we know about some weren't some we didn't know about mm-hmm. so on the surface it appeared like we were moving towards making it harder to dope and get away with it at least on the surface yeah. uh, now we know moving forward that the ufc is going to be doing their own testing so what do you think about this and do you think the implications of the, what do you think the implications of this like ultimately could be moving forward um i think this is an awful idea um you lose credibility when you do that it feels like we're going back to the pride days um which were exciting but weren't clean um and it didn't even give the illusion of being clean and when you have an an organization that does their own testing like that's a conflict of interest that can't be ignored and i think that again going back to the legitimacy of a sport all the other legitimate major sports uh, organizations or leagues um, don't do it this way they have an independent body that that handles these things that works in conjunction with the league so that there is no you know Tom Brady popped and well it's Tom Brady we're going to give him a pass like you can't do that and if you want a clean sport so the conflict of interest is ridiculous and we're, we're clearly going to see some things that are swept under the rug people are going to miss test for whatever reason connor may miss a test when he gets closer to the fight for mysterious reasons and make it up later when whatever it was is actually out of his system like we don't know what's going to happen and it's not fair to the ones that are doing things by the book because I, for everything and as goofy as he is, I think that Chandler is a clean fighter. And if something weren't like that were to happen, that would not be fair to him. Um, and I mentioned it before, when fighters come in and they have things in their body that shouldn't be there that allow them to train just a little bit harder, get a little bit more of an edge. That's where eyeballs yeah. pop out as Michael Bisping. So I don't think it's fair to the fighters. I don't think that is right. Um, and they should for legitimacy reasons, which they may not care about, um, but they should find a division of church and state when it comes to doping and testing. Yeah, um, I agree. I think in terms of the direction of moving towards a clean sport, I think this is effectively shot it in the fucking face completely. Yeah. Like, do, do I majorly care about the sport being clean as a spectator? Probably not. Like, uh, maybe not. Like, but I think the UFC being in charge of it, I agree with you, is a complete joke. Um, we know that the UFC as a company, we have seen numerous individuals get preferential treatment already. 
if they're money makers for the company, they get preferential treatment. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. The UFC will be in a position by controlling testing to ban fighters they don't mind making an example of. So if they've got a particular gripe with a fighter, they can use this as a rod to beat them with and choose when to ban them and when to expose it or not. And they will ignore it in situations where fighters are, the, you know, the fighters that are making the money. They just will. I mean, it's a, this is a little bit of a sidebar, but isn't it a little bit strange to you that we don't hear about fighters getting banned as much anymore? That That's something strange, that I'm no, I've noticed. Yeah, I haven't seen anything about that at all. So. I think part of it might be down to the fact that, like, fighters do disappear for a while and come back and that we have no idea that it's drug test related. I think because they have that, you know, that, that factor of we can keep it quiet, you don't have to... But it's one of the part of the rules, isn't it? That they don't have to announce it. Mm. You can do your ban, and then it just happens, and then which I think is is fucking un unfair because you can once you've had it in your system, we don't know what the long term effects of it are. Um, yeah. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to make an early prediction here. I think that we don't hear anything about this for years, and then somewhere down the line, some whistleblowers emerge. And the UFC finds themselves in another class action lawsuit where we find out that, that, that some fighters had hot tests swept under the rug. And I also predict a mutant level destructive rise in knockouts over the next 10 years. <laughs> we suddenly get some just wild shit happening. Yeah. I agree with you. This is a serious matter. People have been severely injured. Preferential treatment will be given. They should have an independent commission doing it. Or don't even fucking bother at all. Like, either have it independent or just go fuck it. Juice, juice to the gills as much as you want. Having, having the UFC conducting it in-house is total bullshit and defeats the purpose. They've already proven to be corrupt, Absolutely. so... Yeah, that's where I stand.